My Lords, all supplementary questions have been asked, and we now move to the next question, which is the fourth oral question. Lord Randall of Uxbridge. Lord Randall, if you can hear me, you're on. <laughs> um, Lord Randall, one more time. Right. No, Lord Randall. I'm going to ask uh, Baroness Altman to ask her question. Uh, my Lord. I understand that the government is in talks with Canada on the possible reciprocal arrangements for state pensions uprating. Could my noble friend tell the House whether the government is in discussion with any other countries on this issue, including those in the EEA, uh, EFTA and EU? Um, the government is currently negotiating social security agreements with the EEA F to countries, Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein and Switzerland, which aim to broadly mirror the new agreement with the EU. The UK state pension has been uprated in these countries as part of the long-standing provision in the EU law before the UK left the EU, and the government is seeking to continue state pension uprating for those in scope of the new arrangements. The government is not in discussion with any other countries on reciprocal arrangements for pensions uprating. Lord Singh of Wimbledon. My Lords, the Commonwealth should be united by a common commitment to human rights and the well-being of all. Sadly, this has been marred by our silence over the brutal repression of the farmers' dispute in India. Will the noble Baroness, the Minister, agree that reciprocal pension arrangements can help restore the image by, for example, allowing retirement to Commonwealth countries, which will allow the reduction of health care needs in the UK? Um, the UK has different social security arrangements with different Commonwealth countries. While some bilateral agreements provide for uprating, uh, others do not. Um, I'm very happy to uh, meet with the Noble Lord to discuss this further if it helps him. Of Cumnock. Lords, uh, further to uh, Baroness Altman's question. Uh, last week, some of us met virtually uh, with uh, Canadian MPs and their Minister for Seniors, and he told us that a proposal had been put uh, three months ago uh, to the British government which would provide some pension justice for the 125,000 British pensioners living in Canada. But they've had no reply, no response. When will the government respond? And can the minister assure us that it will be a positive response that will help pensioners both in Canada and Canadian pensioners here? Uh, the noble lord is as impatient as, uh, as ever, and so are we to, to resolve this issue. The government has received the request from Canada in November 2020 to conclude a reciprocal agreement to include indexation of pensions, and the government will be responding to Canada shortly. Baroness Jank. My Lords, people with frozen pensions have often lived more than 15 years abroad and have also lost their vote. Isn't it time the government restored democratic rights to these citizens, many of whom still pay their taxes in the UK? The decision to move abroad uh, is voluntary and a personal choice dependent on the circumstances of the individual. For many years now, advice has been provided on Gov.uk that the UK state pension is not uprated overseas except where there is a legal requirement to do so. Baroness Sherlock. 
My Lords, during the passage of the Immigration and Social Security Bill, we discussed the case of Monica Phillips, who emigrated to the UK in 1959. And after 37 years working here as a civil servant, she returned to Antigua to care for her mother, at which point her pension was frozen. Now, the minister told me during that debate that she didn't know how many of the Windrush generation are affected by this policy. Can I ask if the government plans to look into this any further? Um, I must say to the noble Baralist that I regret that I do not have figures for how many Windrush victims have been uh, impacted. But I would say the UK state pension is payable worldwide and members of the Windrush generation who have chosen to leave the UK and have reached state pension age will receive annual index linked increases if they reside in a country where there is a legal requirement to uprate, such as Barbados or Jamaica. Uh, Baroness Eaton. Uh, my Lords, many British pensioner, pensioners living in the U EU are anxious about their pension since we left the EU. Uh, what action has the government taken to protect British pensioners living in the EU? Um, the state pension has been uprated in the EU as part of long-standing provisions in EU law before the UK left the EU. The withdrawal agreement ensures that state pensioners who had already moved to the EU to retire while the UK was a member state will continue to have their state pensions uprated in the EU. Lord George Sir Duncan. Thank you, my Lords. The over half a million people are affected by having their pensions frozen whilst living overseas. The government has said on a number of occasions that it doesn't intend to change the overall policy. How can it be right that something that is so iniquitous and unjust continues to persist uh, and is discriminatory in respect of which countries people emigrate to? Well, the UK government has continued to honour its legal obligations in relation to paying uh, pensions and uprating overseas. And as it stands at the moment, whilst I realise this would be disappointing, uh, we have no plans to change that policy. Uh, Lord Rooker. My Lords, 20 years ago when I was the Pensions Minister, I couldn't defend this policy. In fact, I didn't. But the Treasury wouldn't move on it. There's a real problem here. How is it consistent with Global Britain asking people to work around the world and now with 150 countries, if they retire, their pensions frozen? It's just absolutely unfair and incompatible with being an international nation like we claim. And I would ask the minister to think about her answers today because it seems to me she's given contradictory answers on Canada to Baroness Altman and to Lord Folkes. Well, I'm very sorry, I, I don't agree that I've given contradictory uh, answers. And uh, as I've said again, the government has no plans uh, to change their policy on this and that when people retire to different countries, the information of what their pension impacts are are made very clear to them. Lord and my Lords, can the Minister accept that dignity in retirement should exist for all UK pensioners, regardless of where they live? And that's a principle. And following on from the question from Lord Fuchs and Baroness Altman, the Minister in Canada is waiting for a reply from the UK government. If you, as the Minister here says, it's about a reciprocal arrangement. Surely this discussion should start here urgently because both the government and the members of parliament in Canada seek a resolution to this matter. As I've already said, uh, the government intends to respond to the Canadian government shortly. And I would just say that we are committed to ensuring that older people are able to live with dignity and respect they deserve. And the state pension is the foundation of support for older people. Uh, Baroness Gardner of Parks. My Lords, may I ask the Minister what considerations Her Majesty's Government is giving to unfreezing the state pensions of the 230,000 Britons who moved to Australia to take into account rises of those Britons 
would have received an estate pension if they were still living in the UK. Some now receiving only £48.75 pence a week, despite having made national insurance contributions in the UK throughout their working lives. As I understand it, the previous agreement with Australia, which did not include uprating, was terminated by Australia in 2001 due to the UK's refusal to change its policy on pension uprating abroad. My Lords, all supplementary questions have been asked and 